Now I want to preface this video by saying that I'm gonna be using the n-word a fair bit. This is your one and only warning. Momentum. Whether you think it's necessary or not, the bottom line is that the best Sonic games out there all use momentum in their gameplay and level design. Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles, SA1 and 2, Mania, and especially Sonic 4. Now me personally, I think that momentum, when implemented correctly, can become an essential part of what makes a Sonic game click. So wouldn't it be great if there was a game that took the modern boost formula and mixed it up with the level design of the adventure games and made momentum the main focus of gameplay? Now that might seem like wishful thinking, but in a world where the WWE convinced CM Punk and Bret Hart of all people to come back to the company, do you really think it's that far? outside the realm of possibility. Well, it turns out, it isn't. Now, Spark the Electric Jester 2 doesn't really try to hide where it takes inspiration from. This is evident as early as the save slot menu, which is ripped straight out of SA2. Even the map which is used as the level select menu looks similar to SA2's, so right off the bat, it's evident what you're getting yourself into. Now when it comes to gameplay, people who have played the adventure games are going to feel right at home as it's essentially an updated version of that gameplay formula. Firstly, the controls are sublime, they're everything you could ask for in a game like this where precise platforming is key to success. Movement is responsive, it's tight and overall really smooth. Spark also has a plethora of moves at his disposal. He's got this dash, which gives him a little boost while running. It can also be performed in the air and can be useful at times. There's another one where he stops in place, charges up, and once you let go, he zooms forward at incredible speed. Almost like he's revving up something. Something that rhymes with pin dash. Also, he can homing attack. But at this point, are you really surprised that he can? If you are, I'm, I'm sorry. The level design, oh, it's, it's really good. It makes this game extremely fun to run through. It really puts an emphasis on speed and retaining momentum. The game might give you speed in the form of boost pads. Yes, boost pads. I did say that they weren't going to try and hide it. But it's your job to maintain that momentum by playing good. Just like in the greatest Sonic game ever made. Sonic Unleashed. Fight me, I dare you, I'll bring my brother and we can do this thing. My man randomly punches wooden doors, thinking it'll make him better at fighting. Okay, look, that doesn't matter, that's besides the point. Levels are pretty varied when it comes to what's in them. There are parts that involve careful platforming, other parts have stretches of land where you can just run forward really fast. There are levels that are really vertical, you got those indoor kind of cramped areas which are juxtaposed by large, expansive open areas. Basically, any form of 3D Sonic level design that you can think of is present here and executed flawlessly. Also, there are loop-de-loops. Do I need to say anything? Something else that I think the game does really well is level scaling. Brain cells were actually used when coming out with the level order here. Unlike the Shadow Campaign in 06, where for reasons only clear to Sonic Team, they thought it would be a good idea to have Kingdom Goddamn Valley be Shadow's second level. Only his second one. You go from White Acropolis straight to Kingdom Valley. As a great man once said, What were they thinking? But thankfully, the rate at which the levels get harder is executed seamlessly. Not only that, but something I noticed as well is that the level design became more complex as the game went on. Alternate pathways start to become a lot more prevalent in the latter half of the game. The speed in these levels ramps up to 11 near the end of the game, and with the momentum retaining jump, it can lead to quite a thrilling experience. Also, I want to take this moment to highlight the importance of the momentum retaining jump, because without it, this game would not work. Hell, it saved Sonic Frontiers, you could argue, when Sonic Team implemented it in the later updates. But 
I do have to say that with this increase in speed, a small problem does come up. Now, I don't know if it was obvious through my beautiful gameplay, but I did play this game on the console. So what that means is that near the end of the game, when levels are getting faster to the point of lunacy, controlling yourself tends to become pretty difficult. To the point where just going in a straight line or preventing yourself from falling off of the loops while you're in them takes a Herculean effort. Now, it's hard to fault the game for that, as it's probably because the game was made for PC and then ported over to the consoles. Now, this isn't a huge problem per se, but man, can things end up getting really, really silly in the gameplay department in the latter half of the game. The environments that these levels take place in are gorgeous and extremely creative and imaginative. You got gigantic metropolises like FM City, Technoria City, and Shantoria Town. You got Floria Highway, a highway that runs through a beautiful rural mountainous landscape. Floresta Blanca is a lovely snow-covered forest, and they even made a train level. And look, it's an unspoken truth that train levels, no matter the game, whether it's a platformer, a first-person shooter, or beat-em-up, is always one of, if not the best part, of the game. And surprise surprise, this is not an exception. They even named the level Terminal Dragon. I mean, damn, that's like one of the coolest level names I've ever heard in a video game. Now that I think about it, has there ever been a train level in a Sonic game? There hasn't, has there? How, how is that possible? How on earth is that possible? It seems like a 10 out of 10 idea. How have they never done it before? Well, unless they actually have and I'm just being a dumbass by not being able to remember it. But man, can you just imagine if the next Sonic game had a train level? That would be sick. Come on, Sega. Anyway, uh, wh where were we? Oh yeah, the rest of the levels. There's this lovely vertical level where you scale this gigantic tower, aptly named Titanic Tower. Once again, it's a really neat level design trope. Having essentially the entire level be vertical, it makes everything feel more grandiose. Imagine getting to the very top and looking down, or falling all the way down from the top. It's things like that that make a level thrilling, the sense of danger being one of them. Now look, say what you want about Cosmic Fall from Shadow the Hedgehog, but you do have to admit that the verticality really added to the uniqueness of the stage and helped make it such a cool and memorable level from a setting standpoint. So I just think that the verticality present really adds to the level design and I wish more Sonic levels did it. And to round things out, we are going to space in what might be just one of the coolest level settings in any platformer I have ever seen. So have you ever told yourself, man, I love the opening of Sonic Unleashed, I wish it was playable. Well, the creators of this game basically went, I got you bro, and proceeded to do just that. This level truly feels like you're playing the Unleashed opening, which is still the best Sonic cutscene to date. Don't you at me now, don't do it, I'll bring my brother, remember him? The guy who punches doors just just don't yeah, don't Shh. simply put the end game is superb here i mean i guess there's also boss fights but i feel like along with the combat it's probably the weakest aspect of this game there's nothing to talk about honestly you mash some buttons you attack and that's pretty much it i really really have nothing to say about the boss fights they just kind of happen they're not bad, but they're just so inoffensive, they just kinda happen. So I really got nothing to say about them. I don't think they drag the quality of the game down, I don't think that's possible due to everything else in the game being as good as it is. But hey, they're there, they kinda happen I guess, and yeah, I don't really have anything to say about it. But the final verdict is that this game is simply fantastic. It is a genuine struggle to come up with anything this game does wrong, and even then, it's mostly nitpicks. 
great level design, great gameplay loop, great sense of speed, great environment, good controls, mostly. If you like Sonic games, go play this game. If you like platformers, go play this game. If you like games and having fun, go play this game. And look, even if you don't like games and don't like having fun and enjoying yourself, just, just do us all a favor and still go buy this game. Because then at least the devs will make more money and can make more games like it in the future. And who knows, maybe Sonic Team will start to borrow more from Spark the Electric Jester when making future Sonic games. I mean, it sure seemed like Kishimoto was taking notes during his Twitter campaign a few months back. And if that is to be the case, he could sure do a hell of a lot worse than take notes from one of the greatest platformers ever made. Thank you for watching. I do apologize if the video and audio quality isn't up to standard. This is the first time I'm making a video like this and I also don't have all the necessary equipment yet and I'm pretty new to this style of video. Hopefully with time that will change. I would really appreciate it if you dropped a like and gave a subscribe. I'm going to keep making videos and keep getting better at them. And please feel free to comment below any suggestions for any future videos. Once again, thank you very much and have an amazing rest of your day wherever you are.